Welcome back to TechFlick. We are doing something really exciting today. I've got all my components ready. And on this fourth and final episode of building a home theater PC, we are turning it into a gaming console. Let's continue on this journey, shall we? All right, so my plan is to turn my home theater PC into a gaming console for my living room. So it's gonna be able to play movies, uh, view photos, and play songs. And on top of that, it is now gonna seamlessly integrate into playing games, kind of like the PlayStation. Here's just a size comparison with a PlayStation 3. Of course, my home theater PC is much fatter, but it's gonna become way more powerful than the PlayStation 3. Now let's go through each of the components that I bought to make this a much powerful gaming console. First up, as my home theater PC currently only have a 128GB SSD, I need to upgrade my storage if I want to be storing more games on my PC. So I went with a 480GB SSD from Team Group, which cost me around 76 Singapore dollars. This is a normal 2.5 inch SATA Rev3 SSD and it comes in this all black look with 3 years warranty. And the model I have right here is the GX1 model. They do have a latest version. I believe that is the GX2 model. This SSD is gonna help as 480GB is quite an ample amount for storing games. Next, a gaming console will require a controller. So I decided to get myself an Xbox 360 controller for PC. Initially, I was quite disheartened when I received this package as it came all crumpled up. But it was kinda cheap and came all the way from China. So I guess it's understandable. I got this for around 16 Singapore dollars. And at that price, I'm not sure if this is 100% authentic. They state it's an OEM version. But hey, if it works, it works right? For the color, I went with all black. While holding the controller, it really feels like the original Xbox 360 controller. The buttons feel tactile, but the joysticks are a bit rough. I think with frequent use, the joystick will be much smoother. This also comes with a vibration feedback, but I'm not sure how strong the vibration is. It has a fairly long cable length of around 200cm, and the controller is connected via this USB connector. Overall, at this price point, I really can't complain. And lastly, of course, we have the graphics card. In this case, I chose the Zotac the GTX 1660 Super Amp Edition. I actually spent quite a bit on this graphics card as this is the GDDR6 version, the newer version. I got this on discount at around 325 Singapore dollars. This is a great value graphics card to pair with my 7-year-old PC. I expect this to run most gaming titles at 1080p resolution with high to extreme graphics settings. Unboxing the graphics card, we find this really nice packaging which looks like a shoebox. We got this squarish envelope which includes items like a Zotac gaming sticker, their product fan plate, a quick installation guide, and a note to install the latest GeForce drivers for optimal experience. Next, taking the graphics card out, it looks more beefier than I initially thought. It actually looks pretty good with this grey tone theme going on around it. It comes with a metal backplate which is a plus and it only needs an 8-pin PCIe connector to run. At the rear, we have 3 DisplayPort and 1 HDMI port for display. Overall, this graphics card looks great and I can't wait to try it. And without further ado, let's proceed to install both the SSD and graphics card, shall we? Alright, so we've installed both the SSD and graphics card. Now let's go to the Windows desktop and turn this into a gaming console. We are now in the Windows desktop. So first, I went ahead to install the NVIDIA GeForce drivers first. If you are not sure how to install the drivers, just go to this link over here. Don't worry, I'll leave the link in the description down below. You will first need to download the GeForce Experience program. Just click on the green download button over here and go ahead and install the downloaded program. Once you've installed it, it should look something like this. 
Just go to the driver step over here. I've already installed the latest driver. But you can click on this check for updates button to check if you have the latest driver. If you don't have, you can just download and install the latest driver from here. All right, once you have the latest drivers, we are gonna be initializing our new SSD that we have installed. We will need to open a disk management. You can either search for disk management and click on the first option, or just right click on your start button and select disk management. Once you open up, it will detect the new SSD that we've installed. Here, there are two partition options to choose from, MBR or the GPT. If your new storage is more than two terabytes, choose the GPT option. Since mine is just a 480GB SSD, we are just going to choose the MBR option and click OK. Now here you can see two disks, this 0 and 1. Under this one, you can see the total size. This is our 480GB SSD. It states here that it is online but unallocated. We are going to right click on it and select new simple volume. A new wizard will pop up, so just click next. We are just going to use the default value that is determined by the system. Click next. Here we can select our drive letter. I'm just going to select D drive because it's easy to remember and click next. Here we can rename our volume label if we choose to. I'm just going to stick with new volume as the name and click next. Now just click on finish. It will now begin to format your new SSD. So just wait for a few minutes. A pop up will appear once it is done. All right, now that is done. And if you go to this PC, we now have a C drive and also the D drive. Now we can start using our new 480GB SSD. Now that the SSD is installed successfully, we are going to be installing Steam. This is where all our games are going to come from. I also leave a link for those of you who are not sure where to download Steam from. Once you are at this page, on the top right hand corner, click on this small green install Steam button. It should take you to this page and then click on this blue button. The program will now be downloaded, then click on it and run it. Click next, then next. I'm just gonna install on my C drive and click next. It will complete the setup and just click finish. Steam will now run and just log in with your username and password. All right, now that we are logged in, we are gonna be changing some settings so that our game files will be installed to our new 480 gigabyte SSD instead of the old 128 gigabyte SSD. So go to the top left and click on Steam, then click on Settings. Go to Downloads menu and click on the Steam Library folders. As you can see here, the current location for our Steam games is on our C drive. We will need to change this to point to our secondary drive, our D drive. So click on Add Library folder, select D drive, click on New folder. I'm just gonna use this name, click OK. Select the new folder and click on select button. Now we have two folders, but that's okay. But we're gonna set our D drive as a default folder to use this folder instead. Once you set the default folder as a D drive, you should see a yes under the default column. From now on, all the game files will be installed under the D drive, which is our new 480GB SSD. Now that it's done, let's go ahead and run Kodi. All right, so before we start, I'm just gonna plug in my new controller and kinda test if it works. The controller seems okay for now. So as seen in my previous videos, Kodi is gonna be our main entertainment center for our home theater PC. So we will be using mostly Kodi and I want to integrate Steam into Kodi. So in that way, if I go to play games, I can come back to Kodi to watch maybe a movie, something like that. So right now in Kodi, I basically cut down to only three menu items. Pictures is where my gallery resides. We have our family photos and such. Videos is where I keep my movies, uh, dramas, and family videos. And lastly, we have a weather. It's a handy tool to keep track of the weather in Singapore. So now let's go ahead and enable another menu item. To do that, we are gonna go to the settings, and go under interface. Under skin, go to configure skin, then main menu items, and find games, and enable it. Then we go back all the way to the main menu and we should see the game menu item. Now let's go ahead and download Steam Launcher add-on for Kodi. I also put this link in the description too. So this add-on is basically to enable Kodi to launch Steam. Just scroll down and click on the download link. This will download a zip file. Now that the zip file is downloaded, we are gonna go back to Kodi. All right, so to install the add-on, go to settings, add-ons, install from a zip file, the file was just downloaded, so we are gonna find it under the downloads folder and click on the Steam Launcher zip file. 
Now after a few seconds, you should see Steam add-on is installed on the top right hand corner like this. We can go back to the main menu. Now on the game menu item, we have Steam. Just click on Steam, it will launch Steam in big picture mode. And now you have an interface for you to navigate on Steam easily. If you want to find all your games, just click on library and under games, you will find all your games in your library. Now let's say if I want to play Rise of the Tomb Raider, I can just click on this install button. And now it's downloading and installing the game. Now while I'm waiting for the game to be installed, I can actually go back and click on the power button and click on exit big picture. And now we are back in Kodi. Now I can go watch a movie or look at photos or even the weather while I wait for the game to install. So you can see how seamless the integration is between Kodi and launching Steam. That's it guys for this final episode. We won't be doing any benchmarking for games for my home theater PC in this video, maybe in future videos. For now, thank you for joining me on this journey to build my home theater PC. You can always watch back the previous episode in my home theater PC playlist. This journey has been great from finding a small ATX case that will fit in my living room to unbuilding and rebuilding my 7 year old PC into the new case and then to install Kodi as an entertainment center for my media consumption and lastly, turning it into a gaming console. I hope you learned a great deal throughout this journey on how you can turn your old desktop PC into something cool like my home theater PC. If you find this useful or if you have any questions, do leave a comment down below. I will try to reply most of your comments. As always, if you like what you see, click the like button. If you love what you see, subscribe for more future tech stuff. Until then, this is TechFlick signing out.